Welcome to the Clive Barker Podcast and part 24 of our Dungeons & Dragons game, Jericho Squad 77, set in the capital city of Isordorex in the Second Dominion. As the squad searches the ghost town of Darthur City, they soon discover that they are being watched. So welcome to episode uh, 460 of the Clive Barker Podcast, and this is part 24 of our Jericho Squad D&D campaign based in the Clive Barker world. Um, so, uh, still recovering from their near-death experience and and uh, and actual death experiences. And um, halfway to their destination, the squad found a cabin at the resting point uh, was a living monster. And upon arriving to Darthur City, a new winged angelic Nellianak and a scouting party were attempting to revive 112, who is also known as the Hand of the Unbeheld. Uh, there was talk of moving the bodies to the car, but there were also a possibility of moving them through the transport to the consulate at the consulate office, which now belongs to Drovo. Uh, Chertovir has also unsuccessfully attempted to contact his infernal patron, Gaustus, to return the body of Cassius Briar to hell. Uh, everyone's still kind of beat up and, and, uh, and, uh, hanging around in Darthur City, and that's kind of where we're at. After the destruction of Midian, after the unraveling of the Fugue, after the fall of the Unbeheld and the reconciliation of the Five Dominions, the Jericho organization has expanded and spread itself thin guarding the breaches and investigating anything that comes through. This Dungeons and Dragons game is the story of one of those teams. Let's begin. Just a quick note here, due to a technical flub with uh, Zoom, when the map comes up, all the people are going to go away. Sorry about that. It's obviously not what I had in mind, and in fact, I was all excited about having a special camera for my DM dice and everything, so that was lame, but there's nothing we could do about it. All right, so what do you guys want to do? Yeah, so we were thinking about possibly operating the transports to return back to the other squad. What time is it? I'm always down to eat. Recollect our thoughts. It's getting later in the evening. It's probably around uh, 7 o'clock. Oh, it's dinner time. Yeah. Go to beer. I mean, we could try camping out and, uh, and, and try to come up with a strategy. Well, I tried contacting Gaustus. Um, so do I still have... I'm sorry, I, I gotta ask. Do I still have the antenna in my head? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they look stupid on you. Okay, yes. I would like to focus focus my mind on trying to contact Gaustus. And okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to focus my antenna or whatever I can feel up there. And, so basically, uh, you want to use your um, you want to use your sending stone, with, and and uh, you make an intelligence check to try to remember what he looks like, and it's okay, pretty low let's... DC. You just had really lousy rolls. I know. So I'll do an intelligence check. Yeah. Oh. All right. I got I got a twenty. Yeah. Uh, you. It for some reason it seems like the sending stone's not working. Okay, okay. Which you had uh, a really clear picture of him in your mind, and it should have worked, but it didn't. Okay, I'm going to say there must be something here, uh, guys. There must be something here around Durther City that's maybe blocking 
Um, the way that I could communicate or using the sending stone. I'm not sure that I can communicate with anybody. Make a perception check. Okay, 25. Okay, uh, you sense that there is something nearby, uh, some kind of creature, but you can't see it. I can't see it because... Does anybody here have can detect magic? I feel like we're being watched. Uh, I'm not sure that... Uh, I think we might have something watching us. Anastasia? Yeah, I have detect magic. All right. I think we might be watched. Uh, well, what can you, uh, you know, get? Okay. Can I go ahead and cast detect magic? Yeah. When it uses a spell slot, but nothing happens. I've got my tree sight glasses we could use. Yeah. Uh, one hour of tree sight per day. Richard, can you, do you think you can, you can see anything with your glasses? Let me put on my glasses and uh, I say the magic word. Now I'm kind of just glancing around, okay. looking around for anything that seems I'm trying to out of see place or anything that's trying to be invisible or blend in. On the map here. Okay. Um, yeah, they're just, they're not doing anything. Well, did, so do you have to speak a magic word and they work for one hour a day? Um, okay. But, yeah, yeah, so right, I speak that magic word. Yeah. <clears throat> and right now they're they don't seem to be working it you know you you didn't even you didn't even set them off so you they they still have the ability to work uh but your magic word didn't do anything huh i think there must be something here that's countering all our efforts to investigate um if we can't detect magic if we can't see anything and they've got this feeling of being watched. So I'm not sure that physically looking for anything will help us, but, uh, hmm. Does anybody have any other ideas? Should we, what, what, what is the largest building that I can see? Well, I think if um, we get on this, climb this tree, we can see the entire area. Hey, that's a great idea. Climb a tree again. I like climbing trees. All right, look, that sounds like <laughs> a great idea. Have... There's sometimes yeah, Ralph. Things. Why don't you do that, Ralph, and see and tell me what you can see up there? <laughs> okay. Right, me... Ralph, climb tree. Uh -huh. There's a stupid fence in my way. Oh, I found an entrance. Oh, nope, there's so a fence in my way. I can't get up the tree. I will jump the fence. Okay. And then uh, I will get it... on the tree. That's like a walled garden, isn't it? Well, yeah. yeah, there's there's a gate on the north side of it. Or you can you make an athletics check check to jump the fence. Five. Ralph's still tired. Five, yep. Yeah, you are uh. not able to climb over the fence. Ow! <laughs> are you okay? Well, let me try to climb up there since I've got these glasses and I've got pretty high strength and uh athletics does, any, does anybody hey. want to check the north gate and, and richard you're going over there and climbing the fence yeah i'm going to go over there and climb up to the top of that fence okay i just now rolled in d and d beyond and i got oh, a 22 I... oh yeah okay you're able to climb over the fence and you're climbing up the tree yeah i want to climb up the tree and kind of kind of survey okay i do have a um, pistol and shoot people if they come around all right. Um, well, uh, just, uh, just looking around, you you um, you can get kind of a better view of everybody, but uh, you don't see anything out of the ordinary. You see anything up there? Is that is that a no? I can't see you. You're up there in the tree. Not really. All right. I see some birds. Grab me one. Uh, all right, guys. So should we? Like, I I, I feel like. I feel a rather reluctant to uh, carry the, the dead bodies of our enemies back to uh, the Jericho squad headquarters. But what do you guys think we should do? Sh sh should we like go into go into the buildings and see if we can find whatever, you know, make sure that there's nobody here hiding? 
So Richard, sure. did, you didn't you didn't use your glasses right when you were in the tree. Well, he yeah, said well, he was going to get the magic word to work. What's that? Well, you tried you it when you were down on the ground. You didn't try it up in the tree. Can I try it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. So I say the magic word, and I start looking all around me, trying to find what is causing this to to go on. Okay. Um, make a perception check. Natural twenty. Okay, Plus what's two, the total? 22. 22, yeah. So with the 22, uh, you are able to see uh, up in the, uh, you see in the upper le- right, upper left corner of the map, a round creature with a big central eye in the middle of it and uh, 10 eyes on top of it. It's like a, a sphere. Guys, I see something, but I don't know what it is. I where? Where something. is it? There's some sort of creature over there with a bunch of eyes and one big eye. Big right up there. Angel. Here he comes. To the so you said that you said that pretty loud. Let's see. Northwest. Here he comes. Okay. Holy cow. Okay, I pull up my sword. Ralph right. tentacle whip flips it, rolls out. Yeah. I slide down from the tree. Yeah, he, he's kind of starting to figure out that you're on to him. So everybody uh, roll for initiative. All right, roll for initiative. Hey, I got 22. Ralph All rolled right. a four. All right. 14. Uh, 14. Did you 22. Oh. It's a scroll up. It's as far up as I can go. No, you have to scroll up and it's like initiatives plus two. Oh, you got six. I got six. Well, Ryan, do you have there if 14. I still have uh, mage armor or not? I know it what? goes on for a few it's hours. It's for eight right? hours. I don't remember. I mean, did you cast it last time? Yeah, I think I think we did <clears> when I was fighting. Yeah, then it would still be on. Okay. I got 12. I am not prepared to fight. I am more prepared to retreat, to be honest. Can no one charm this thing? No one what? Can anyone charm it? Make it be our friend? I don't have any charm. <laughs> of course you don't. Okay. Um... You're the charismatic one that keeps rolling in the dirt. <laughs> and do you think that gets me friends? Uh, it should. It should. Okay. Is this thing approaching us or are we just going to talk about it? You just rolled initiative. It has doesn't oh. have a turn yet. Sure, it's sure to be his turn. It's oh. my turn. And he don't. And yeah. he don't want to fight. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I. I. I am not prepared for this. I am very wounded, and um, although I have mage armor, I want to. I want to get out of here. I. 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 I turn to everybody and I scream out, "Hey guys! You know, we. I don't think we can fight this thing." I, Looks like a spider I, with tentacles instead of legs. Okay, so I'm gonna say, guys, I'm I'm just really hurt right now. I don't think I can fight. I'm not ready to uh, to confront this thing. I I think we should make a retreat. And <laughs> I, uh... you guys all drew your swords and alerted it that you were gonna start fighting it, and now you're changing your mind. Well, I mean, just because I pull my sword doesn't mean I'm ready to jump in and fight. I'm just trying to that, protect myself. I think myself. that's what that means. Well. Um... Dang, I can't. I mean, I that's how that's how the behold that's how he, he took it. Okay, well, I'm going to try to make a break for her to the gate of the city. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sir Robin. <laughs> He's so right away. <laughs> so you you can you can use an action can you to move. Me? You can use an action to move double if you want instead of attacking. Oh, I can. I am out of here, you guys. Oh yeah. crap! Should have your scuttled off. Yeah. 40, 50, Bastard. 60? There yeah. you go, 60. I'm out of here. <laughs> it's either this or me rolling for, you know, uh, death saves for the next 10 minutes. Well, that's if you're lucky enough to have death saves. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know how he ran away. This thing's angry. 
<laughs> so is that really 60 or would you be like off the map? I think that's like 60, right? Yeah. Someone put a, a, a arrow from when I was standing next to Ralph and they read like 40 or 50. Oh, okay. Don't go too far away because my mass healing word can't get you if you're more than 60. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Right. We have a doctor in the house. Oh. I mean, I can still run. There's that. Okay, so is that the end of your turn? <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, you, you, Musette, you, you, I'm you, sorry, you it's your shit. turn. Just Joe, be quiet. Okay, wait, sorry. I'm having a hard time turning my turning. Oh, there we go. Just kidding. Okay, I just wanted to. Ralph is in the way. One, two, three, four. And I am going to. Oh, shoot. It's from my Wand of Wonder. Okay, well, this seems like some. That's fine. Okay, so how do I do my Wand of Wonder again? Uh, yeah, you just point it at, at it and you click at one of the charges and you and then you roll a D100 to see what happens. So, Ari, right, do you want to point it at him or at yourself? Uh, no, I'm pointing it at him. Okay. And then... And it doesn't work. Oh. It doesn't work. Okay. Yeah. Does that count as a... That counts as a... As an action, or is it just? Um, as, it, yeah, it's, it's yeah, that counts as an oh, action, yeah. but it doesn't use up the charge on your wand. Oh, okay. Well, we'll take care of that next thing. Um. Well, then I'll just go ahead and cast Bardic Inspiration for. It says, um, oh, any creature that I can see. So let me do Bardic Inspiration for um, Anastasia. Anastasia. Okay. So she gets um, 1d10 for okay. one ability check, attack roll, or saving throw. Yeah, and that's um, and that's really not casting. That's kind of just playing music and being inspiring. So okay. that works. Well, then that's all I want to do. Okay. Kind of looking like magic doesn't work, guys. Yeah. Starting to look that way. There's no more erasure, is there, Ryan? This, I'm sorry, I'm just... I know this right. sounds like metagaming, but yeah, okay. Just making sure. Are you trying to run to the First Dominion? No. No, I'm trying <laughs> to run out of here to the van to get the okay. F out. <laughs> okay, uh, Richard, it's your turn. Time guys i think that uh, maybe we should at least try to communicate with this beast before we do anything rash and start attacking it i mean we don't know if this is friend or foe we just know that it is inhibiting our ability to cast spells and stuff but when i was up high I set my spell for my glasses and i saw this guy but i just don't know if it was correlated or if it was coincidence but i think we should at least communicate and at least try to intimidate him or persuade him to not attack us. Because we're kind of disheveled right now. Well, go for it then. <laughs> All right, so I just <laughs> kind of, I yell to try to intimidate the beast that's up in front of us from the other side of the fence, I'll be it, because that's where I'm at. And okay. so I yell at him, I'm like, hey, leave us alone. We're extremely powerful. You don't want to do this, buddy. I don't think okay. he understands English. Uh, make an intimidation check and also make a deception check because you guys are pretty messed up. It says, You look like you're about to die to me. Great. Yeah, well, looks can be, you know, deceiving. Your attempt to deceive me has failed. This is a boring conversation, kill well, what do you What do you want, buddy? Okay, you want right, you're, you're, if you keep talking, you're going to use up your whole action just talking. You got a, a, a turn is six seconds. You got a gun? Shoot it. No, I'm not, but I am going to jump the fence and get closer to you guys. Uh... Oh, you're over in the tree. Okay. Standing right in front of a gate. Oh, well, yeah, you don't have to through. jump the fence. So I move closer to these guys because, uh, yeah. And that's the end of my turn for now. I'm trying to be a little bit more cautious about 
you know, just randomly opening up fire on people and beasts. Okay. Sentient beings. Okay. Uh, well, next it is his turn. And he is going to... Let's see. Fly up and over the wall. Over ah. and right in front of Jertomir. Ah! <laughs> and he's... Uh, this thing he's is going fun. to... Yeah, he's going to use... Um, telekinesis. Are you kidding me right now? He's got so many options. <laughs> okay. Okay, so <laughs> you, you start to feel the Boston Bowl uh, float out of your pack and over towards oh. him. Oh. So make a uh, make a strength saving throw. A strength to try to get it away throw. from him. Yeah. Oh. Everybody's always trying to steal that thing. I should stop carrying it with me. Um... All right. Ah. Ten. Okay. Uh, yeah, he gets it. It it floats over and it's kind of landed on top of his head. Do we need that thing. Did you repeat that? Do we even need that? Thing? Well, I need it. It belongs to my family and it's a prophetic instrument. Uh, did it fall oh. on its head? Good job. He's holding it on his head because he doesn't have any hands. Right. Wearing it like a hat. Yeah, exactly. It's actually adorable. My bowl. Yeah. My uh, bowl. And um, <laughs> it says, "Do not resist, or you will be disintegrated." He's gonna disintegrate you. What do you want? I think it's obvious. I just took what I wanted. Way to go. Wait. But you can't have it. You can't have the. You can't have the bowl. It's mine. You can't have it. I just took it, so I can have it, and I will disintegrate you if you resist. Hit him. I'm not giving me much of a choice here. Um, okay. Well, it's not even your turn. Oh. Okay. I'm gonna All say. Right. No. Okay. Next up is Zoe's turn. Okay. So since magic is not working, that kind of limits what I can do. Uh, um, well, actually, you you can use magic now. You can feel it. Ah, okay. Well, then I guess I'll uh, do. Uh, let's see. Let me get on my third level here. I'm gonna do mass healing word. Okay. And I I can do basically everybody because since everybody's within sixty feet of me. Okay. Okay, uh, I'll do it. I'll do it fourth was. level then because that's letting me doing it. So okay. 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 So I got one. Oh, might help if I get it in the tray. Okay, so Ralph two will be up plus next. ten, so twelve. Everybody gets twelve. Twelve. Yeah. Oh, Everybody you can have that on everybody. Yeah. Yes, I did mass healing. Yes, right. mass healing. Nice. Twelve. Thank you. Thank you. All right, wonderful. I've got nineteen now. Thank you. So um, I think mass healing spot. word is a bonus action, so you still should have an action. Oh, okay. Well, um, hmm. <clears throat> and movement. And you can heal yourself too. Okay. Well, I'll I'll put the twelve one in just a second. Um, I think. Oh Lord. Um. Well, since I need to probably give everybody another healing spell here pretty soon, I'm gonna hang back and just stay where I am for now. That'll be it for me. Okay. All right, Ralph. It's your turn. This Ralph's turn! Yeah. Totally cool. Ralph, it looks like magic works again. Magic works, so I'm gonna Eldritch Blast. Roll, roll my 20. Uh, you, where are you standing? Oh, I see. I'm standing over here like a dingus. I should probably uh, move closer. I think, yeah, I think you're lined up where you could hit him. I was thinking there might be a wall in between you and him, but I think... Well, if he's flying, him. right? He's hovering above Shodavir? He, he on the other over side the of the wall, wall. and he's, he's hovering yeah. a few couple of feet off the ground, because he's always uh, hovering. A couple but... of feet off the ground. So it might be covered by the wall, I'm not sure. No, Am I, I in think, the way? It, I think if he you can were to shoot, go through? Uh, it, the gate's open, and I think that Ralph can shoot him through the gate. Right there. All right, let's that. go with that. 
How about Ralph just goes right here under the gate? Yeah. That works too. I'm gonna be like, oh, I'm gonna Eldritch Blast you. Okay, roll to hit. Uh, Eldritch Blast me, bro. I got two beams, so if it hits you, I still have another one to hit him. <laughs> That's not what I'm concerned about. And you're in luck because I have Agonizing Blast oh. on top of my Eldritch Blast, which adds three plus three to damage. It deals on a hit. And then oh when God. I repel it, it pushes him away 10 feet. And I can do it twice. So I'm going to roll the hit. Yeah, okay, roll the hit, please. Okay. Plus 7 and 20. And I, I can go 120 feet, so he's in range. That uh, hits. Okay, cool. So that's 20. Then I roll my my 10-sided dice. So my first blast is uh, 12. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 misses. Ooh. Okay, well, I didn't hit Chodavir, and okay. I pushed him 10 feet away from you, so do something with that. Okay. <laughs> I don't think our map goes another 10. Does it go another 10 feet? I guess it does. Maybe? Well, I mean, I imagine you just grab the character there. and push him back two spots. Yeah, I did. I can push him off the map. <laughs> uh -oh. Okay. All right. <laughs> So on his legendary action, he's going to shoot an eye ray at Ralph. For What's a legendary that. action? That's where you get turns on other people's turns. So let's see. Does that happen when it's a really powerful creature that can take make a dexterity else's... saving throw, Ralph? Yes. A dexterity saving throw. Hold on. So 18, 19, 20. Okay, uh, you you succeeded. That's right. So you started to feel like you were being slowed, but you shake it off and it doesn't work. Mmm. It okay. doesn't work. And then hold on. Top, top of something. the next round is Chudavir. Is the bowl still just on top of his head? Yeah. I have. Okay, it's Chudavir's turn. We're at, top, at the top of the second round. I am going to cast Dance Macabre. So okay. that has a range of 60 feet, concentration up to an hour. And it says, threads of dark power leap from my fingers to pierce up to five small or medium corpses that I can see within range. Each corpse immediately stands up and becomes undead. I decide whether it's a zombie or a skeleton. The stats for zombies and skeletons are in the monster manual. And it gains a bonus to its attack and damage rolls equal to your spellcasting ability modifier. Uh, okay. Which is... So how many of these corpses are you turning into skeletons? And which ones? It says up to five. How many corpses do we have? One, two, three, four, five, right? There's four Dullian Axe and there's one twelve. It's the fifth one. And there's also the angelic creature was lying, I think, in front of the in front of the um, gate. It was okay. there earlier, but now it's gone. Because I'm seeing the the man. okay, because I'm seeing Nolanak A, B, C, and D, and then 112. Cassius is on top of the van right now. Oh, he's on top of the van, just like a deer. Okay, <laughs> okay, <laughs> awesome. Uh, all right, I'm gonna turn all. Four Nolly and Axe. Okay. Uh, into zombies. Okay. And okay. 112? No. I'm okay. Just, I'm just gonna... Gonna leave 112. Well, why not? I mean, yeah, I can turn 112 into a skeleton, I guess. Uh, I wanted to leave him out of it because... No, you know what? I'm gonna leave him out of it. I don't want to reanimate 112 in any way. Um, I just want to get those four Nullion Axe, turn them into zombies. Applicable to this because this is... So, so these are zombies, not skeletons. These are zombies. Okay. And they got a, a bonus to their attack and damage rolls equal to my spellcasting ability modifier, which is plus three. Uh, now I can use the bonus action to mentally command the creatures I make with the spell, issuing the same command to all of them. Kill him! Okay, so I point at the creature in front of me and say, kill him. Do you stay where you're at? Uh, yeah. 
Okay, I've got him into the uh, initiative order now. All right. All right. So, is that the end of your turn? That should be what? So, yeah, I think so. Yeah, that's cast as an action. Mm-hmm. As another legendary action, when he heard you telling somebody to kill him, he's going to fire a ray at you. Uh, make a wisdom saving throw. Wisdom saving throw. Yeah. Come on. 11. Okay, you fall asleep. Yep. Our librarian is taking a nap. Yeah. Okay. Uh, He's all tuckered out. Okay. At least it didn't kill me or burn me from the inside out. And you are still. You guys integrated. have really lucked out as far as like what, because I I roll randomly to see which ones he uses. He's got disintegrate ray and death ray. Okay, uh, wow. but you don't know that. Call me lucky. And so wait, now that Chodavir is taking a, a nap, does that mean these Nolian acts are done for immediately? <laughs> no. Wait, okay. it's is a it, concentration is it, spell. Is it a concentration spell? Fuck. Yeah. Yeah. They, <laughs> they, they all fall over. Okay. Uh, it's Musette's oh, turn. That sucks. Also, I probably shouldn't have laughed so hard because I feel like that's going to immediately kick me in the butt. <laughs> uh, it's, I'm not laughing because it's humorous. I'm laughing because it's painful. Yeah. We're those people that laugh at inappropriate times. Okay. Um, Sorry, Trudevir. Okay, uh, sorry. I'm gonna do my uh, wand of wonder again. At the uh, at the creature. Yeah. At the okay, creature. and 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 it works this time. And you didn't okay, use cool. up a, a spell uh, a slot on your wand last right. time because it just wouldn't even start. Eight. So I thirty-eight. Eight. Okay, so you see what thirty-eight is on the wand of wonder. Uh, you cast lightning bolt. Oh. That is going to hit Ralph and Chertovir because it goes in a straight line. So it's going to hit Ralph and Chertovir and then the Beholder dude. Maybe it'll wake Chertovir up. Okay, sorry. Well, yeah, pro- it, probably. Unless it okay, kills so... him. It takes up a five foot area, you know, all the way to the ground and. and uh... oh. Okay. Okay. From what uh, I remember. So Pile on the sleeping librarian. Yeah, so yeah. each creature in the line must take. Make a dexterity saving throw, uh, 8d6 lightning damage on a failed save, or half as much on a successful one. So, Ralph can do a dexterity saving throw. I mean, a dexterity saving throw implies that you're diving out of the way, and that would be tough to do when you're asleep. (laughs) Ah! I'm so screwed. Okay, he got a 6. So, you're you're gonna hit him. I mean, it's going to do full damage to the to the bad guy. I have an idea for something for Chertovir, but I'm not sure this thing is going to work. Yeah. Um, on uh, Lesser Restoration, it says you touch a creature and can end either one disease or one condition afflicting it. Does What's going on with him? Does that apply to that? Oh, waking him up? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can just, you can just shake him. You know, or oh, throw something okay. at him. Yeah. Well, I didn't. Well, you know, because oh. I, I figured, you know, maybe he was like spell asleep. You know. No, it's it's yeah, it's easy to wake somebody up. Okay. Yeah. You can also you can shoot him with a lightning bolt, and that what might do it too. Uh, well. I don't want to do that though. <laughs> yeah. We might I need mean, him later. Yeah. I mean, didn't I just get hit by? Uh, Musette's uh, lightning. Lightning bolt. Yeah. yeah. So Musette. I'm still figuring that. Yeah, eight, eight six-sided dice. Uh-huh. And then the last one is... And, and Ralph has to make a dexterity saving throw to get out of the way. It's 23 total. 23 damage, okay. Yeah. Oh, Ralph Ralph rolled a 20. For his oh. dexterity saving throw. Okay, yeah. so you take half damage, which is uh, 11. 11. Eleven. Okay. So you still yeah. take a damage. Sorry. Okay. And then Chertovir, I and, guess. And Chertovir, you take the full twenty-three. Okay, which means you just killed me. <laughs> well, you're unconscious. Yes. You're not dead yet. Uh, so I went down to zero points. 
Yeah. Your old Tucker Darrell. Uh, yeah. And now I'm fried to a crisp thanks to a lightning bolt that. Uh... Sorry. Yeah. There's a reason why I don't use that uh, that wand <laughs> ever. There's. It's very. Uh, That's dangerous. okay. Yeah. I have spells that I never get to use because I'm always surrounded by you people. Yeah, I, I killed yes. somebody with a wand of wonder in another game one time. He's a big baddie, so we got to do it, whatever it, it takes. It did, uh, it did a fireball. Oh. Oh, okay, Rob was there. <laughs> <laughs> that was a perfect uh, Woody the Woodpecker laugh. <laughs> oh. All right, so um, uh, is, that, <laughs> is that the end of Musette's turn? Yeah. Yeah. Are you staying where you're at? Or are you going to move somewhere? No, I'm going to stay where I am. Okay. Uh, then, for his last... Well, actually, it's a whole new round, so he has new uh, legendary actions. He's going to shoot an eye ray at uh, Musette. That is a 10. I believe that's the death ray. Uh, he's shooting the death ray at you. Okay. Make a dexterity saving throw. Okay. Uh, I got a 20. Oh, you dodged out of the way, which is really good. Because that does uh, 10 v 10 necrotic damage. Jeez. <laughs> okay, it's Richard's turn. All right, so Richard's not going to sit this one out. He's going to run up in there with his pistol. And he's going to shoot. I'm aiming directly for that thing's eyeball in the middle. Okay, so um, you, you're going to make a called shot. Like, so ooh, yes, you I'm add add, add another. Add, yeah, so that adds another five to his armor class if you're going to aim for a specific area. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, like to make it harder to get yeah. targeted uh, damage? Or yeah. So that it, you doing trying to aim at his central eye um, made it at twenty three. So do I? That missed. Hit any of the area around him? No, you missed. Damn it! All right, I'm gonna try it again. Okay, the same thing. But I'm just shooting for... this time. At okay. Him. Okay, roll to hit. Twenty two. That hits. Okay, roll your damage. Seven. Okay. Yep, he takes a bullet. And then I yell at him, just give us back the bowl. He says, your bargaining posture is highly dubious. Just give it back. <laughs> right. All right. Uh, and now it is his turn. He gets a lot of turns. Yeah. Got a lot of eyes. He's <laughs> yeah. legendary. He's used up one legendary action out of three, and he gets three per turn. Plus, wow. he gets his actual. Wait, movement. I thought he his did his two legendary turn. actions, didn't he? Yeah, that. That was in the last round, round though. We're on I round he two. Six already. Where he gets, he got three last round, and he only used two. And this time, he's done one out of this round. He's moving here. He's, and he's doing double movement. So he doesn't get an actual action. Okay. And that's the end of his turn. And now it's Zoe's turn. Okay. So since everybody needs more points, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and do another fourth level mass healing word because I'm working now. Finally. Yay. Okay. So cast this. 18. So I wake up. Yeah, you get yes. you've got eighteen hit points. We'll we'll see how we do at the end of this round, and and then I have something up my sleeve. But um, I think, yeah, that, that that's all I'm going to do for now. I'm kind of staying in the back to make sure everybody gets healed. Okay, uh, now it's Ralph's turn. All right, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing then. Turning. Base our tentacle spider. Okay. And then I'm going to uh, do t 
ten or two blasts of uh, my eldritch agonizing repelling blasts. Okay, roll to hit twice. Okay. Okay, so his first eldritch blast misses. I'm and uh, what, okay. What about your second one? Sixteen. Sixteen also misses. Okay, so he got two misses, and he's getting hit with a slow ray. So he needs to make a uh, dexterity saving throw. 18. Uh, That missed, then. Okay, two dexterity. And he used his second legendary action. Uh, So next up is uh, Richard is next. Starts with an R. Yeah, you know, um, right on. So he's starting to, I feel like he's starting to get away almost. And if we keep hitting him with these Eldritch Blasts, don't they push him back like 10 feet, <clears throat> which is going to uh, be further further away from us? Well, I'm going to run over here next to Churdivere. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and shoot again. I rolled an 11. Okay, uh, roll to hit. You get what? You get two shots. Twenty-five. That hits. Okay, go ahead and roll your damage. Ten. Okay. He's uh, taking some hits. He's starting to look a little hurt. Oh. Physically or hurt his feelings. <laughs> and next is uh, round three. It's Chertovir's turn. Yeah, points. and so you you are lying on the ground, so it'll take half your movement to stand up, but not like an action or anything. All right, so uh, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to... Hey, look at that. I've got Cloud of Daggers. I'm going to fill a Cloud of Daggers that fills in a cube five feet on each side, centered on um, the preacher. Yeah. Uh, and it says here it'll take 4d4 slashing damage when it enters a spell area for the first time on a turn or starts its turn there. Okay. All right. Uh, when, it, when you cast a spell using a spell slot of third level or higher, the damage increases by a 2d4 for each slot level above second. So I'm launching this at a... Uh, I'm casting this at a fifth level. Yeah. It says 10d4. So 10d4... Yeah says 26. 26. Okay, he takes... We'll just do it now. I like to do it now because, you know, by the time we get to his turn, I might forget. Uh Uh-huh. So, but technically, we're supposed to be doing it at the start of his turn, but it's not like, you know, he. I don't know what he could do about it. So, 26. Okay. And this does say the damage increases by 2d4 for each slot level above second. So, I'm not sure if when I clicked at 10d4... If if you clicked it on on the right spell level then it did it yes yep yeah. okay yep 26 damage okay a lot of yep. daggers he, yeah he's he's getting pretty hurt and yeah he's mad that you did that and he's gonna use his uh actually this is a new round he's gonna sure. use a legendary action to fire a ray at you mm-hmm. hopefully this is a ray <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh this is fear make a wisdom saving throw wisdom all right. Let's see. I'm 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 pretty wise. Let's see. Wisdom saving throw. Twenty five. Oh. Okay. Yeah. It uh, it missed you. Or it, yeah. It, it, it hit you, but it didn't have any effect. You're able to shake it off. You were you were starting to feel really frightened, and then you're like, no. I'm shaking it okay. off. Yeah. And next up, well. Uh, is that it for your turn? You gonna move or anything? You have uh, half your movement. Yeah. What? Well, actually, I was having an idea, but this is kind of silly. I don't, I don't know. You you tell me. Sometimes I should do more stuff. Um. Can I? Can I run into the van and try to start the van? Um, so you can go 15 feet because you've used okay. half your movement to stand up. One, so two, it looks like you could run up to the first headlight there. Ah, uh, okay. 
Um, can I go back on that idea then? Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to finish my action and that's going to be it. Okay. All right. Sounds good. And Muzet is next. Okay. So I'm just going to move, move, move so I can actually see um, the creature. I don't know its name. What are we calling that guy? Well, I mean, he's based, he's, based, he's based on a beholder, but he's a, he's a creature of Hepexamendios. The so he's not a yeah. monster. No. Yeah. Let's call him, let's call him uh, okay. Ryan. That's... What? <laughs> no, okay, that's uh, irrelevant. Anyway, okay, so I'm going to do a wall of fire... Um, Long, 20 feet high, one foot thing, or ring wall. Oh, let's do a ring wall and just put him in the middle there. You're going to give him a ring worm? So he's, so he's got a cloud of daggers on top of him, and he has to go through fire to get out of this wall that you're building. Perfect. Hell yeah. Not okay, great. Easier. Okay. Um, okay, so it's just a charge, it says. So, uh, the saving throw is dexterity 15. And it's 5d8 fire damage. How, how tall is the wall? Uh, you can make it up to 20 feet high. Oh, the ringed wall is 20 feet in diameter, 20 feet high, one foot thick. Oh, okay. And then on side, one side of the wall, the spell deals 5d8 fire damage to each creature that ends its turn within 10 feet of that side or inside the wall. So I guess I would do it on the far side, like near his butt, near his backside. Okay. So that way it's further away from us. Well, he's he's facing away from you. Oh, okay. Well, then on his front side, the furthest away from us side. Yeah. Is the side okay. I choose, is, there we go. To make it easiest. Sorry. Um, a creature takes the same damage when it enters the wall for the first time or turn ends on it. Yeah, okay. So the usual. Um, and I'm casting it at fourth level. Alright, and so, and that's all around him, and if he's even close to it he takes damage, or does he just take damage when he tries to move through it? Um, it looks like it's even when he's close to it. One side of the wall, the yeah. spell deals 5d8 fire damage to each creature that ends its turn within 10 feet of that side, or inside. Okay. Um, yeah, go ahead and roll the damage then. Okay. Did he roll his dexterity? <laughs> Oh, dexterity saving throw. Yeah, I'll do yeah. that. He's got plus two. So that's a nine. Oh. So he failed. Okay. So he four. takes full damage from that. Okay. The damage is 14 then. Okay. And then I guess he has to take it on his next turn or until it gets... I, I'm just doing it now because... Just yeah. like the cloud of daggers, I don't want to right. forget when it's his turn. No, these turns are long. I, I understand. That was Musette's turn. Now it is the creature's turn. He is going to use his action to move out of all of this business that's hurting him. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. As a legendary action, he's going to shoot an eye ray at Muzak. Seven. Which is... Sleep Ray. Okay. Make a wisdom saving throw. A wisdom saving throw. Yeah. Eleven. Okay, you fall asleep. Okay. <laughs> That's the worst thing that happens. Yeah, it's not too bad. And it's um, Zoe's turn. Okay. Um, let's see. We've already given everybody 30. Um, does, I, does everybody, does anybody else need like an extra shot of healing or? Good. Uh, I, I'm, I'm at 41 out of 85. I think I'm all right. Okay. The cre the creature could use some help. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, that's just too bad. Okay, so um, let's see. Let's go ahead, and I have 
this thing here I can do. Churdo Veer looks like here. he's in bad shape. All right. So for my action, uh, I would like to uh, do, where is it? Radiant Soul, because uh, I can fly. Mm. Um, I think I should be able to but... Oh, I did forget to mention everybody who died has a minus two on everything. Oops. Yeah. Wait, we'll, just do, we'll just do it going forward. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, Cherdovir and Musette and Anastasia. I'm even less charismatic than I used to be. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Hard to believe. Hard to believe. I got a charisma yeah. so plus two. Every time you rest, that that number goes down by one. Yeah. And I put, get my glimmering eyes and my wings, and I can go. I think that's close enough because he's within ten feet there. There's a and... wall in between you and him. Oh, there is. Oh well, yeah. yeah then. You can't then, see then, it, but. Then no, I don't want to do that. Um, okay. Shoot. Um, well, I'm. Okay. Well, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and try to heal up everybody as, as much as possible because we we didn't take that rest and that'll give us more of an advantage. That's true. Okay. Okay, let me go ahead. Uh, let me go to my spells here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead, since I only have two slots for fifth anyway, I'm going to go ahead and do fifth level mass healing word. Okay. And since everybody's still within the right, uh, 15 more they points, 15. guys. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'll just stay where I am. <laughs> okay. I did my job. <laughs> Thank you so much. You've been like you've been like Nurse Ratchet today. Uh that didn't uh, come out right. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> you know, Nurse Ratchet is a, a, a love character. Lawrence Nightingale. There, there you go. go. Yeah. Oh, God. I think you're trying to pick a positive nurse character, not a negative yeah. nurse character. Yeah, yeah, not not the one from Lobotomizing Jack Nicholson, you're right. Sorry. Right. About be careful, be careful or I'll tell your mother. <laughs> and in the south part of the map, there's a wall there. You can't see it, but it's there. Oh, right here, there's a wall. He's hiding behind a wall. Yeah. Fear Devere is going to be next. 20. To, 20 to double 30. movement. Okay, and there's a. And how high is this guy floating? He, he's just. He's basically at ground level. He's basically at ground level. Okay, yeah, so I'm going to do my Elder's like six Blast, inches from the ground. which is the only thing I really can do. I'm going to try to blast this wall away and then use my second beam to hit him. Oh. Okay. Um. All right. Because, I mean, he's hiding. I, yeah. I have a turn. <laughs> okay, here we go. First blast. Roll to hit the wall. Okay, so... So let, it's the first blast is 17. Okay, yep, yeah, that that hits. Okay. And it's not like it's trying to dodge, but it's tough, so you might not do damage just because it's a wall. Okay, so what's He doesn't what's get the, hit by the back. He doesn't get hit by the 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 stone of the wall doesn't hit all over him. Well, what's the damage? 13. Okay, yeah, you need a 10 to shoot through the wall. So you you created a hole. And it makes, uh, and then since it's a uh, agonizing or paling blast, it pushes everything ten feet. So yeah, it, it pushes the wall. Oh, uh, okay. Brick, so you're you're the... thinking maybe chunks will hurt him? Um, I mean, it wouldn't hurt. All hurt right. Him. So yeah, let, let let's use your spell casting modifier, and uh, and make it to hit roll with the chunks of of rock. Twenty. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You. Hit... Okay, uh, roll 1d6 for a bludgeoning damage from chunks of rock hitting him from the other side of the wall. Damn, that's good thinking. That was good thinking. Uh, Extra points. Would I just, yeah. would I add anything to this roll? Uh, no, just 1d6 damage. Oh, 1d6? Oh, it'd be a 2. Oh, okay. All right. And now you get one more shot, and you can shoot through the wall straight at him. My second blast rolling to hit. Yeah. 26. Yeah, that hits. Go ahead and roll your damage. Five. Okay. I did that. Yeah. And he is going to um, 
use a legendary action to shoot back at you through the hole. Ten. Oh, he's shooting a death ray at you. Uh, make a dexterity saving throw. That's a twenty. Okay, you dodged it. All right, uh, Chirivir. Okay, so we are on I'm... round four. Mm -hmm. Oh wait, actually, yeah, Chirivir is next. I'm gonna move over here. Okay, back inside the wall. Okay. And then... Keep in mind, whatever you do might hit me. <laughs> and if you want to shoot through that little hole that in the wall, you'd have to get pretty close. I mean, because, like... <laughs> well, um, okay. Ralph can do so, okay. it, but it's not its not a huge hole. It's, a, it's kind of a small hole. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to be right here. Okay. okay. I'm not in his line of fire. I'm, I'm not. I could probably look through the hole. And then... Um, well, he's really close to the hole, so he can shoot through it. Okay. Um, I, I would like to cast... Um, hmm. Hmm. I would like to cast Magic Missile. Okay. Uh, at a let's see what do i have available here at a fourth level make a perception see. check first to see if you can see him through the little hole at that distance mm -hmm. i mean it's easier for ralph because he's right up next to it but it's a little tougher for you 10. Mm. yeah i would say you can't really get a clear line of sight on him from there okay okay <clears throat> um let me see what else I could do then. Uh, so, there's nothing in terms of spells that I could hit him with. Um. Well, you don't want to read to see, like, do they say any creature that you can see, or you know? Can I can I point at the wall and try to make the hole bigger? Yeah. Okay. Can I shoot a magic missile uh, at a third at level the at the wall? Yeah. And magic missile hole. automatically hits, so just roll damage. Okay, so I'm going to roll damage for that. First, first missile was plus two damage. Second missile is plus two damage for... Okay. Third missile is plus five, so that's nine. And fourth missile hits for four points, so that's 13 points damage. Okay, to the wall, To the right? wall. To the wall. Yes. Isn't okay. level three five um, missiles, though? Make uh, 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 and we'll do the same thing with the rocks, <laughs> you know, that we that we did with with uh, Ralph. Oh, okay. So you so, want my magic modifier? Yeah. So your spellcasting modifier for wizard, because you did three. a wizard spell. Yep. So that's so plus, plus three, three to hit. Yeah, and roll roll twenty sided die plus three. Roll twenty sided die plus three. Okay. You got to beat an eighteen to hit him. I got 17 plus 3, that's 20. No, the plus... Well, oh, I see. Okay. Uh, yeah, that hits him. Roll 1d6 damage. And I got a 3. Okay. He takes 3 points of damage. And Alrighty. he's going to fire a ray at you through the hole. Okay. Roll a dexterity saving throw. Minus 2. So my dexterity saving throw is 10 plus 3, and then minus 2, that's 11. So it's 13 minus 2 is, yeah, 11. So you failed, and you are slowed. Okay. So you have the slow condition. If you go to conditions, you can check the slow. But it basically okay. means um, you can't take reactions, and you can only do um, either an action or a bonus to action on a turn, but not both. Guys, and your movement, have... is, movement is half. Guys, I have something to confess. I'm slow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and now is Drovo's turn. So he he puts down what? his Game Game Boy Advance. Hey! It's about know. time. Welcome yeah. to the party. Yeah, he is gonna five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. He's gonna make an uh, ability check to climb the wall. Plus. Five is eleven, so he didn't quite make it over the wall, and he's positioning himself to the side of the hole so that he can't get shot at. And I guess that's it. 
Okay. And Richard's turn. <laughs> All right. So I am going to try to sneak around to the backside of him. I'll use both of my actions and stealthily move 60 feet closer okay. towards him on this side of the wall. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead and move the 60 feet. 60. Okay. But it, you can't. You, he can see in 360 degrees, so you can't really like sneak up behind him. <laughs> well, okay, I'm just not like I think. Hopefully, yeah. he's a little bit more distracted. Yeah, you know, wishful thinking. Just the action surge, and then I'm gonna shoot okay. him. Okay. Okay. Uh, roll to hit. Roll to hit with my automatic pistol. Yeah. Is a 16. That misses. 25. Yeah. Um, that hits. Go ahead and roll your damage from your bullet. Wow. Nine damage. Ouch. Okay. He's going to use his last legendary action to shoot an eye ray at you. Two. He's going to... Okay. Uh, roll. Make a constitution saving throw. You get hit by a paralyzing ray. Okay, uh, you shake it off. You start to feel your muscles lock up, but then you, um, you're you able to get out of it. I just woo-saw a little bit, rub my earlobes. Yeah. Shake it off, shake it off. <laughs> okay. It is the creature's turn, and he's going to double move again. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five, forty. Okay, and so he uses his action to to double move again. And now it's Zoe's turn, and Ralph will be next after Zoe. Did I not get a turn? You did. Now you're asleep. Oh, we're still in this same. Mm. Okay. okay. Um. Hmm. Thought we had started. Anymore. We're on round four. Oops. Yeah, we are still on the same round. How do we wake up, Musette? Yeah, Musette, you were right before Richard. Did we miss your turn? I didn't go. I've been asleep, but I was oh, put okay. to sleep. I thought the last round, but I think we're in the same round. I'm not really sure. Yeah, in. well, and the sleep wakes and works until somebody wakes you up. Okay, well then I guess I'm just still asleep. Cool, sorry. Yeah. Okay, um, I guess I'll just go ahead and wake you up then. Let me move my character here. Because you said all, all we have to do is shake her. Yeah, you could even do a bonus action and throw like a rock on her or something if you don't uh. want to use your whole action. <laughs> I don't want to throw a rock at her. Uh, then wake up! Just <laughs> <laughs> so laugh her across her the face. Into the, air. <laughs> the power well, I mean, of memory I... compels you. I mean, I could throw a shoe at her because I have lesser, lesser restoration. That would wake her up and keep Chernivir from being slow. Wow. Am I, am I allowed to do that? <laughs> throw a shoe at you. But then you're missing a shoe. I can always get it back. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Tentacle <laughs> monster. Musette's going to eat it. Yeah. Well, Chernivir's going to have his turn before Musette, correct? If I remember the the order correctly, okay. So Chertivir is just slow. He's not like completely taken out, correct? Right. Yeah. Chertivir is slowed. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna move and wake her up. That way we've got we've got another fighter. So wake up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. All right. That that'll be my turn because everybody should be okay uh. on points right now. Okay. Uh, Ralph is next. Yay, Ralph Snacks, Ralph Snacks. Okay, how big is this hole I made? Because I'm just going to kind of wiggle through it. Um, yeah, make a, um, make an, you can either do athletics or acrobatics check to get through the hole. It's bigger now. It was small, but it's bigger because of Chernobyl's, um magic missiles. Okay, I'm just so imagining said... him, like, walking on the wall around the hole like a lizard. <laughs> You, you said acrobatics or what? Or athletics. Or athletics. Whichever is higher. Acrobatics. Acrobatics. Athletics would be like forcing your way through, and acrobatics is kind of like dodging your way through. So uh, I rolled a seven on that. Yeah, you're not able to make it through. 
<laughs> Does he get stuck? <laughs> no. If it was a one, he would probably have gotten stuck in there. I don't have hey. that big thing on me anymore. Does Ralph have a tail? Yeah. Do you ever lose your tail? <laughs> no. Get stuck question. somewhere? I mean, it's possible. No one's ever chopped it off yet for me to find out. Yeah, would it grow back? No one's ever chopped it off for me to find out. Well, I can't get through this hole. Mm-hmm. And I don't think... The the gate, the gate wall is like 10 feet up. I don't think I can use my pack boom to, 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 for this thing that I just rolled. And the wall's 10 feet up, you said? Yeah. All right, well, then I guess I'll just climb over it. Wait, does that mean I use two actions? Uh, you used an action to try to wiggle through the wall. Ah, oh, this or, is well, so stupid. Okay, yeah. I'm going to stick my hand through the walls and blindly aim at this tentacle monster with my All Eldritch right. Blast. <laughs> you kind of know which direction he went. So roll yeah. with dis- roll to hit with disadvantage. So you roll Ooh. twice and take the lower number. So it's a one. It's a one on the first blast. Critical fail chart. Saying you can't cast that again, that spell ever again until you get a long rest. Can I at least do my second blast? Yeah. Okay, I just rolled a 22. Okay, yep, that hits. And that's with disadvantage? Yeah, you have to roll twice to take the lower number. Oh, okay, hold on. Well, 17. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that turns misses. over. Unless I want to. Well. Okay. Okay. I can't even see here. the guy. He's in my. I'm. Uh, okay. Dude, are you okay? No, I'm annoyed. That sucked. <laughs> I need a break. This episode is sponsored by Don Bertram's Celebrate Imagination. Don Bertram is a longtime friend of Clive and advocate of his art. But Don's unique and inspiring paintings are for sale, and over 50% of the proceeds go to the Arts and Medicine program at the Texas Children's Cancer Center. There's even a paver in Washington, D.C. representing Celebrate Imagination. We're thrilled that this worthy cause is sponsoring our podcast again this year, and we hope that you'll consider looking over his Pinterest page and commissioning a painting of your own. For commissions, Don requires no money down, and there will be no obligation on your part. You can also head over to the Etsy shop to buy one of his books, like A Chimney Sweep's Tale, Celebrate Imagination, or The Imaginaries. Follow the link in the show notes, or click on the side banner, and let's see what's new with Don Bertram today. This brand new painting, Bloom, can be found on Don Bertram's Facebook page. All proceeds go to the Arts and Medicine program at the Texas Children's Cancer Center. Also, just posted on Don Bertram's Facebook page... Two small tulip paintings and one large sunflower painting. So go check those out too. Hi, I'm Joe Monco. This is Catalina. And we got a bunch of events coming up. Okay, so at Look Cinemas in Arlington, Texas, off 20, uh, Catalina has set up Wicked Wednesday that Little Spark Films will be hosting several films. Uh, Starting on August 14th, we have the original film by Ridley Scott, Alien. Then we have Natural Born Killers on October 2nd. October 9th, we'll be doing The Sixth Sense for its 25th anniversary screening. Uh, The Nightmare on Elm Street for its 40th anniversary on October 16th. Young Frankenstein on October 23rd for its 50th anniversary. Uh, Black Christmas uh, from 1974 on its 50th anniversary, uh, screening October 30th. Uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre on its 50th anniversary for no- on November 20th, and Gremlins from 1984 uh, on its 40th anniversary on December 18th. All screenings start at 7.30 p.m. and are on Wednesday and are free to attend. Humanoid character artwork for Musette, Chertovir, Zoe, and Ralph by Asia Yordanova. She also created the Unbeheld in the opening title sequence. Jonathan Livingston Seagull artwork by Shayla Sackinger of Bird Ninja Art. 
Map of the Reconciled Dominions and His Order X by Marco Staines at Mark Stain Art. Jericho Squad intro composition, Cradle of Jersemet, provided by friend of the show, Ben Warren. Additional in-game music by Tabletop Audio. The Barker Cast Interviews, Occupy Midian. Previously, this book was only available on Kickstarter pre-order. But now you can get it on Amazon.com. Over 400 pages of interviews documenting our time at the start of the podcast and the Occupy Midian movement that successfully lobbied for an extended version of Clive Barker's Nightbreed when the movie studios and distributors were against it. Chock full of interviews with cast and crew, there are some great stories. Edited and assembled by Ryan Danhauser and Zelle Tung, the people behind the long-running Clive Barker podcast. Tell the world you're a Clive Barker fan and support this monumental effort from the fan community by buying this book on Amazon Hardcover, Kindle, or Apple Books. Thanks for listening. Reading. Thanks for reading. If you want to support us at the Barker Cast, a great way to do that and show us off is the Barker Cast Tee Public Store. We've got a Jericho Squad crew shirt. We've got uh, Cenobium. We've got uh, Marcus's pinhead design. There's all kinds of great designs, and they're, and they're not just t-shirts either. So please go check it out, uh, get something, and support us. Thanks. Of course, the best way to support this podcast is through our Patreon at patreon.com slash BarkerCast589. Our subscribers will get exclusive access to content not available anywhere else, like our Collector's Corner video series, Rare Barker videos, and early behind-the-scenes stuff. Plus, backers in the $10 tier will also be able to choose an episode topic, and we might mail you something once in a while, depending on your location. Our supporters also get access to the exclusive channel in our Discord server. We'll be forever grateful if you consider helping us out and subscribing to our Patreon. So what's new on Patreon? The first Collector's Corner episode was all about uh, Jump Tribe, but this one is about the game Jericho and all the different versions of it. I wanted more time. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use double movement because I'm going to use my actions. So I'm going to go outside of the wall. <laughs> so that's one, two, three, four, five. Okay. And then I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. I guess that's it. So I'm around the corner here. There. <laughs> I'm around the corner. Okay. Chasing down the monster. Oh, wait. You you have half movement because you're slowed. Oh. Oh, in that case, that's right. You're right. You're correct, sir. One moment. I will back away six. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. And I, I yell out at Richard. Richard, sorry, I'm slow. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's Drovo's turn. He's going to try to squeeze through that hole. <laughs> And he makes it. Uh, yeah, or it's 19. Yeah, he squeezes through the hole. And he's going to run up to... Yay, Drovo. And uh, he's going to do... Um, he's used his action to squeeze through the hole, but he's going to do his bonus action and do flurry of blows. Wow. So he gets two attacks with that. Wow. Oh, a natural one and... Uh, 16 plus 8. 24 to hit on one of them. 8 damage from punching. And the natural one, he slips on a rock and falls down on the ground. This is a new round, so he's got three all-new uh, legendary actions. So he's going to shoot back at Drovo. Slowing Ray. So he, he passes. He's not slowed. No. And that's the end of Drovo's turn, and next is Musette, and then Richard after that. Okay, I'm going to move. <clears throat> One, two, three, six. And then I'm going to misty step on just onto the other side of the uh, wall and uh, looking through the hole. 
Okay. Yeah, make a perception check. This. Well, no, you don't have. The hole's a lot bigger now. You don't have yeah, to do well, it. Well, it says yeah. that I just use it, and it's instantaneous. And as long as I can see, as long as the space is unoccupied and I can see it, it should be yeah. okay. And I would say you yeah, can okay. see it because they've worked on making that hole bigger. The hole bigger. The, yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to be right there. Okay. So that was your movement and bonus action, I think. Oh, uh, actually, yeah, I think it is a bonus. Yeah. yeah. It is a bonus action. So okay. you still have an action. I do. Cool. Okay, thank you. Um, um, okay, so I'm just going to do Cloud of Daggers at fifth level. Put him, put it right on him. Okay. And... <laughs> right in the middle. Oh, yeah. So at fifth level, it's 10d4 damage. Okay, yeah, go ahead and roll the damage because it's just automatic. 23. Okay. Wow. Yeah, he's hurting. And it's Richard's turn. Before that, he's going to do his second legendary action and fire a beam at you. Enervation Ray. Uh, make a constitution saving throw. Ooh, five. Okay, you fail. Oh. Okay, so it's 8d8 uh, damage. Ouch. Uh, yeah, 50. You take uh, 50 damage. Necrotic damage, yeah. Uh, I did the damage. I'm at 18 out of 68. Oh, okay. Okay, I was counting. I was subtracting from 18. Never mind. Musette's still up. Barely. And it's Richard's turn. <laughs> and this creature is also looking like it's in really bad shape. I'm just flabbergasted at the amount of power that that legendary action he took did. So, you know, I just move forward. Use one action to move. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And I'm liking the long range game on this. So I'm going to <laughs> shoot him again. Okay. And looks like I missed with an 11. Okay. And a 15. Okay, that misses. So I curse, and that concludes my turn. It is his turn. And he's going to uh, move off of the Cloud of Daggers, and Drovo will get an attack of opportunity. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. He's double moving again. So I'll let Drovo uh, take a swing at him with his silken sword. So 10, he takes 20 damage. Jeez. Okay. But he's not dead. He's going to use his last legendary... Well... That's his turn. He gets to do those on other people's turns. So, no, he's not doing a legendary action right now. Uh, Zoe's turn. Okay, so I'm going to move over here next... Actually, let me get on here. I'm going to move myself over here next to him. And then I am going to do... Um, lesser Restoration to get that slowness off of him. And I touch him. Boom. There yep. you go. Cool. He's in, you're no longer slow. Thank you. Well, not that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, still that way, though. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, and, and okay. Anything else from, from Zoe or Anastasia? No, because I'm, I'm really not anywhere near. Okay. okay. And it's Ralph's turn. Ralph's turn. Yeah. Ralph up against the wall. Can't make it through the wall. The bad guy's going down the wall. You could try to go through the wall again. You can try to go through the wall again. But also... It, Ralph's uh, all discouraged. Twelve. Trying to go. Over yeah, the wall. You, you make it. You barely make it through. Oh, wow. I made it through. Okay, 
also. How far is this guy? If I move right here, is 10 feet within range? Of, like, can I hit him? No, I think he would need to be in... You're right, he would need to be in the square. One so he's right... Yeah, he's right outside. Yeah. Yeah. So... So that was one action, moving all those feet, right? Um... Uh, Oh, did you? Oh, did you use your action to double move? Yeah, I, I going. And I would say you used your bonus action to squeeze through the hole. Okay. Yeah. So you're. That's yeah. That's kind of it. And right. sure to be here. So let's see. Uh, one, two, three, four, hmm. five. It's five feet. Okay, six. All right, I'm over here, around the corner. Okay. Okay. Um, I guess I could try double moving. Uh, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Is that is that right? I think it looks like you can go one more forward. Okay. Okay, one more <laughs> forward. According to Rob's measurement. Right. Thank you, Rob. And then I'm going to... Yep, I'm in pursuit. So I'm just going to, you know, just going to stop my turn here and uh, okay. continue the pursuit. Okay. Well, so at the end of your turn, he sees Drovo as the biggest threat right now. So he's going to fire a legendary action ray at Drovo. 53 damage, and we'll see if he halves it with this. Constitution saving throw. This is an enervation ray. And yeah, he take he took the whole what did I say? Fifty seven. Yeah, Drovo's unconscious. So what does the enervating ray do? Is it like uh what kind of damage it's, is that? It's necrotic damage. Oh, okay. Oh no wait, we're on the new round. That was his first legendary action. Okay, and it's Musette's turn. And then Richard after Musette. One, two, three, four. Just need one more. One more. There we go. And we'll cloud of daggers him again. Oh, okay. At uh, fifth level again. So it's uh, the ten. D does music ten still four. have spell slots left? This is like the second fight. That's. Yeah, that's my last fifth level spell slot. Oh, okay. Wow. All right. Um, yeah, roll the damage. Uh, because last <laughs> time I did all my, I used up all my third level spell slots. Okay. So I have two fifth level spell slots left. I actually still have spell slots left. <laughs> um, okay, sorry. So 10d4. <laughs> wow. 22. Yeah. All right. Uh, describe what the cloud of daggers does to him, because this kills him. Oh, nice. Um. Well, I I think we're putting it on the inside or put it right on top of him, right? Yeah. So I guess it just kind of like gets into his eyeballs and then pulls him apart. <laughs> yeah. Oh. As goofy All right. as possible, please. Yeah. So um, yes. yeah, combat is over. You guys were able to uh, to kill the the nasty creature. Oof. All he wanted to, to do floor. was get a bowl and run Ooh. away with it. Was the bowl worth it, Chodevere? Yes. I walk up to the dead body of the beholder and grab my Boston bowl, put it back in my bag. Hmm. Do you like kick him for good measure? Is there anything left? <laughs> I don't know. Um, uh, you want to? You, oh, you want to search him? Does, I'm searching him. Does okay. Chodavir have to step through all that goop? Yeah. Yeah, I uh, guess I think, so. I think Ralph is the one that's on him right now, but yeah. you guys can oh. walk up there too. No, thank um, you. So that. yeah, make a make an investigation check. Who me? Yeah, whoever wants to search him. His teeth look pretty gnarly. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Can you make a make necklace? A necklace? Oh, he actually, he actually has a bite attack, but he never uses it because it's not as cool as all of his eye rays. <laughs> I mean, I could use all these parts with. Yeah. The idea for the necklace is pretty cool. 
I yeah, Richard got a four. You guys are all just kind of marveling at what a weird looking thing this is. Anybody well, else? Uh, well, Ralph Who else has, is uh, investigating. Isn't Drovo still dying? Yeah, oh, I was, shoot. Yeah, I was That's about true. ready to say I need to I need to wake him back up. Drovo somehow. Okay. Anyway, uh, I, I put my arms up. And I tell Ralph, "Hey, Ralph, you want to go for a, a, a goal? A what? You want to hit? You want to kick it for a goal? I mean, I could. The big eye. Oh. Well, yeah. All right. Go <laughs> I for it. Up, I run up and try to stop Ralph from kicking the eye, and I look at these guys and I'm like, "Come on, man! This guy's dead. Let's not disrespect his his body." Look, what do you mean disrespect his body? <laughs> I mean, last time to... we disrespected some dead bodies and let okay. us to a whole world of, of hate. All right. I just, so, I so wait. Let this guy rest. I'm respecting uh, him right. by putting his carcass to use. So, um, uh, Anastasia hey, said, what, what were you going to do for, for Drovo? What? Uh, well, I've got the rod of resurrection I can use. Well, he's unconscious. He's not dead. Oh, okay. Well, I guess I can. He's unconscious. He can't take a potion because he can't swallow it. Um, he can pinch his nose. <laughs> yeah, he can dump it down his throat if you want. Uh, or he's my can brother. Heal him. Let's see. Um, I have cactus needles. We can stab his toes and try to wake him up that way. <laughs> yeah, are you gonna um, do that? Sure. Yeah, I'm looking. I'm looking at my levels here. Okay, so Richard, roll okay. an attack with your cactus needle. What, what, what do you want me to roll? Uh, an attack. You just add your proficiency bonus to stabbing <clears throat> him with a needle. Stab. Um, my proficiency bonus is a plus four. Seven plus four is a lead. Okay, you missed. <laughs> okay, hey, back to Drovo. I'm gonna go yeah. over to Drovo and do a healing word um, okay. at fourth level. Okay. So it's a four D four plus three. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, go ahead and roll that. Twelve plus another three is fifteen. He gets fifteen back total. Okay. He is. Up. Is that good enough, or do I need to go again? Uh, no. That's he's awake now. He's up and he's he's got 15 hit points. And if Richard had succeeded, he would have made him automatically fail a death saving throw. Oh, whoops. Yeah, so Richard was trying to kill him with a needle. I was just trying to be helpful. <laughs> hey, man, it's a strange land. Well, I'm just going to use my sword burst to uh, have this cloud of swords surround me since I'm standing next to him and chop him up into pieces and pack him up. Even more? Yeah. Do you have any spell slots left? It's an at will thing. At will? Cantrip? It... Con conjure. Yeah, it's a cantrip. Cantrip. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. I'm just going to use that, chop them up, take necessary pieces <clears throat> that I find cool. Is anybody else going to investigate him? Okay, I, I can. Maybe he's got a heart made of diamonds. You don't know. Let's chop him uh, up. I guess I'll go back there and uh, yeah, I'll get in there and see if chop, I can chop, find chop, anything. Chop, chop, okay. Chop. Are, are you doing that while he's doing the sword burst or after? No, the sword I, burst is done. So he's you already up. did it? Yeah, he's chopped up in little pieces. I All saw right. him with my tree side glasses. I'm off to the distance, like focusing on my little antenna again. I see you underneath the monster. What does that do? Uh, I'm just trying to see if I can connect to Gaustus again. Oh, okay. okay like what? Okay. <laughs> I thought you were just Gaustus. playing with your antennas. Well, uh, yeah. Okay. I, I could, yeah. Make but... make an intelligence check. An intelligence check. Okay. Let's do that. Yeah. So, uh, okay. That comes up with hey 23 20 plus three yeah uh nice. you you're able to contact gaustus and he says acolyte what have you found gaustus i have uh i have questions and i have news first i have in front of me the body of 
my enemy that I thought was in your custody. Can you tell me what happened? Why, why did he escape? Someone on your side used blood to bring him back. All right, so there is that possibility. Okay, how do I re how do I give this uh, body back to you? I will open a portal for you. Uh, put the body in the portal. In the circle. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go up to where uh, when I finish providing you with the the body of this dead wizard will you get rid of these antennas in my head no well, well how long do i have to keep them on i saved your life how long are you alive fair point okay all right let me go ahead and uh push this uh corpse back into the portal we're okay. here lots of babes like guys with antennas yeah, so I've heard. So I've heard. <laughs> Where is so the, yeah, uh, the a circle? A, a, a magic circle kind of appears in front of you. Yep. And so you can see a, you can see a, a figure of Gaustus. Um, yeah, and you're going up to the van and getting that. But the rest of you see a figure of Gaustus there, waiting for the body. All right, cool. All right, here's here's uh, here's Cassius Briar. Um, did I check the body? Did I investigate the body? I think. You guys have already taken all of his stuff before, right? Yeah, uh, you you never checked the body of one twelve, or um, the new uh, eyeball creature. You just gotcha. chopped up. Okay. Oh, I'm collecting his teeth and some of its uh, some of its uh, flesh. Okay, okay. so the I push leather out of it. Yeah. Okay. So, so what happens you... after I? Mm -hmm. You put the body in there. He says, thank you. He says, when you run the race, most opponents will be from the Butterfield faction. You must kill them. One will be mine. Do not interfere with him. And he takes the body and he leaves. He said, uh, when you, when you do the race that we have to defeat our enemies. One of them is going to be for him. We we must not uh, take that enemy. And then he disappeared. He, he said, said most, you. Will, most will be from the Butterfield faction. You must most, kill them. Okay. Butterfield faction. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds we, yummy. Yeah. So I think we should return back to uh, the Jericho headquarters. What I need you guys rest think? and sleep. Yeah. We y'all need a rest and sleep. Yep. Okay, so what are so you guys going to do? I guess uh, we'll rest and sleep in the truck ride home. So whoever has the most HP should be driving. That'll be me. All right, so, so I guess... And uh, Drovo says, hey, if remember there's a portal in in the in the consulate building. I can get that up and running again if you want to just teleport back. Can we take the truck yeah. with us? Yeah. Well, I guess not. We can't take the truck with us, so that means we'd have to leave the truck here. Okay, we can establish. We can. We Don't can we need to replace that. Bentley's truck? We'll get him. We'll find or him a we, nicer, better one. We can come oh, back well. later if we just disable the battery for now. We can undo the negative battery post and. That's a good idea. Let's do that. Let's make sure nobody can steal it, and then yeah, let's, let's keep our options open. Take the yeah, battery. let's <laughs> let's set up a, a, a minor camp here, and then just use the portal to go back. Yes, and and that way, if we need to travel from here uh, to another place, we can just portal in here and use the van. Okay. Go team. All right. So let's go to the consulate building. I think I see it back there at the end of the. Yeah, it's always trying that has to that... get in it, but it seems like it only has windows and no doors. Oh, Ooh. there, you have to go around the back. I see it. Okay. Let's... Oh, I was trying to move it in the actual screen instead of the actual map. Okay, let's all go in there. Which is yeah. the door? By this the awning. It's where, where the, the awning is there on the go. south side, yeah. Oh, I went around the back end. Okay. 
Um, okay, you guys did. I'll, I'll say that it's not ripped up. You guys got the the cloak of invisibility from. <laughs> did anyone? Yeah, sweet. So I got it. Did yeah, anyone also want to search one twelve or do anything else, or are you just going to go to sleep first? I'll go search one twelve. Okay, make an um, investigation check. Sixteen plus six. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. you find um, magical armor and two magical swords. This is my stuff now, guys. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there, there was also the angelic creature. Um, oh, where's that guy? By the door. He's over by the gate. Man, I'm making out like a bandit here, y'all. Yeah. And you've got snacks for later too. Are, are you gonna? Are you going to uh, investigate him? Yeah. I think I will too. Angelic creatures are kind of like my thing too. Thirteen plus six. Where am okay. I? Okay. All right. Get uh, out so of I got, I rolled a nineteen on that angel dude. Do, 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 do. Okay. So uh, go ahead and yeah, yeah and um, Anastasia rolled good. also. Seventeen. It's seventeen. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, so um, between the two of you, you find a magical scythe, um, 360 coins, and um, magic armor. Well, you got one set of magic armor. I'll take the other. You want you want to split the money? I don't even think money? I need it. I'm just going to bring it back to Bentley's and see who wants it. Uh, yeah. I, probably, I probably could. You also... Probably um, also the, All I've got the, is studded leather. So the Nolian X have uh, have long knives. They each have two long knives. Oh, well, then I'll knives. take these guys' long re- knives. Regular, regular knives. I'm running out of space to hold things, so let's yeah collect all this stuff and we'll divvy it up at the house. Yeah. Okay. We got the long knives on these two. Mm-hmm. All right. So uh, the magical armor is that um, better than the studded le- leather plus three that I've got? It seems like it would you be. would need to like do um, uh, identify. identify, yeah, or um, or you try to wear it for an hour and see what happens. Uh, might as well. We're not okay. doing. Okay. Yeah, just grab it and bring it with you. Yeah. Okay. We'll just grab it for now. Yeah, and Bentley has the ability to identify stuff back at the at the shop. Okay. Can't Shurdevir identify as well in Drovo? Mm-hmm. If he had taken that spell, I think he could. Mm. I don't know if he has it. I would identify what? This armor that we found on the angelic creature. Let me see what spells uh, I have. I'm going to grab all four blades then. Because right, that I sounds got, familiar. I grabbed uh, all four blades and all the other stuff. In there. Yeah. I do. Oh, wait, I do, I do. Identify it. But um, it takes uh-huh. ten minutes to cast. So you said there were two swords and armor, right? Yeah, four two, swords. Yeah. I got all four two, swords two, two and armor. Two short swords, a scythe, and armor, and two armors. All right, I touched one of the first armors. Okay, uh, w- which one was it? Is the one that came from the angelic creature or the one that the came from one creature? Okay. Uh, it is. Uh, it's called. It's studded leather, living armor, is what it's called. All right, studded leather, living armor. So it's it's a hideous armor that's formed of black chitin, so it looks like an insect carapace. Mm. Um, hey, yeah. that'll go with your antenna. <laughs> it gives it, it has a plus one to armor class, and it gives you resistance to uh, necrotic poison and psychic damage. So that means you take half damage from those things. Mm-hmm. It's also symbiotic, so when you put it on, it sort of attaches to you like a living it's like creature. Like venom. Like venom. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, it, and does anybody it requires want this? fresh blood to be fed to it immediately after you finish any long rest. Uh-huh. You have to either give it half of your hit points or your hit dice. Okay. Which or take one level Probably get exhaustion. vampiric touch to. Yeah. Be... So hit dice you, you can use to heal yourself on a short rest. So you would be using up your hit dice every day to, to feed the armor. So it wouldn't actually hurt you. I mean, but it would stop your ability to heal yourself during short rests. That doesn't seem like a very good yeah. deal. <laughs> well, that's that's what it is, guys. You want me to touch the other armor, too? Well, there was only two. Yeah. So what's the other armor? 
Okay, so there, plate armor of etherealness is what it's called. And that's what 112 was wearing? Yeah. Uh, while you're wearing this armor, you can speak its command word as an action to gain the effect of etherealness spell, which mm. lasts for 10 minutes or until you remove the armor. Uh, and it's a it's Does a plate that mean armor. you can walk through walls? Oh, okay. So you could wear the plate armor of etherealness. Are, are, are there any drawbacks to this one? Like the blood not, thing? Not really, no. <laughs> uh-uh. <laughs> Because that would definitely help me. Because one one thing that was uh, keeping me from doing more in this last fight was the wall. <clears throat> mm. So that mm -hmm. would be able to get me to you guys faster to heal you guys up. Yeah. So yeah, if I you think can I'll... walk through walls. Yeah. 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 Well, I... it's kind of it takes you to like almost like it would take you to the Anovo, but allow you to see the regular plane and walk walk around through it, kind of like mm. a ghost. And it makes your armor class eighteen. I don't know what your armor class is now. Uh, seventeen. So it pull, pulls it up. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't allow for any dexterity bonuses because it's heavy armor. While on the ethereal plane, you can only affect and be affected by other creatures on that plane. Creatures that aren't on the ethereal plane can't perceive you and can't interact with you unless a special ability or magic has given them the ability to do so. You ignore all objects and effects that aren't on the ethereal plane, allowing you to move through objects you perceive on the plane you originated from. When the spell ends, you immediately return to the plane you originated from and the spot you currently occupy. If you occupy the same spot as a solid object or creature when this happens, you are immediately shunted to the nearest unoccupied space that you can occupy and take force damage equal to twice the number of feet you are moved. The spell has no effect if you cast it while you are on the ethereal plane or a plane that doesn't border it, such as one of the outer planes. So I don't know... It kind of reminds me of like that movie Insidious when they go into the ethereal plane or the astral plane. Yeah, with right. the lantern. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or Stranger oh. Things. Or the upside yeah, down. The upside down. The upside down. Yeah. Or the Innovo, but I don't yeah, know. Yeah, that's a good idea. You know, because that's a the Innovo. Yeah, that would involve you getting vulnerable to like maybe possibly a novo creatures and stuff like that we'd have yeah, to come it, well up with and something it, like it that. makes sense that it would be the innovo because i think that's kind of that would be the equivalent touching the side to learn what the side does cuts down wheat <laughs> it, it's the um ab it's the absolution scythe Ooh. okay but absolution does it take attunement i'm gonna guess yes And then do you want to look at the, the swords? Yeah, I got one more spell slot for identify. So well, like I said, oh. if you're doing it as a ritual, it doesn't use up your spell slots. Oh, okay. All right. So let's do it as a ritual. It takes 10 minutes though, right? Yeah. Okay. So, yep. Let's do that. And what are the swords? You've got a short sword of life stealing and a flame tongue short sword. Ooh, those sound cool. Uh, what happens when we use them? Okay, a uh, short sword of life stealing. Uh, when you attack a creature and you roll a 20 on the attack roll, like a natural 20, if you get a critical hit, in addition to the critical hit damage, they, you also do uh, 10 necrotic damage. And you get 10 temporary, temporary hit points. All right, so that's cool stuff. We will pack all that and take it with us to the consulate building. Flame tongue short sword. That sounds good. What does that happen? What do, did the enemy you, get? You say a magic word and and on, as a bonus action, and the flames go on it, and I believe that makes it do an additional one d six fire damage. Well, I might be interested in that one. Yeah, for sure. The flaming uh, tongue of what was it called? Flame tongue short sword. Flame tongue short sword. I like that. Yeah, yeah well, let me put a pin on that one for now. Um, oh, 2d6 so fire damage yeah, on top of your regular damage. Oh, 2d6 on top yeah, of the Yeah, but you have damage. to be able to use swords. I don't know if you can or not. Not really. I mean, we can always come back here at some other time, but I think right now it's best if we just all regroup and uh, heal up and get a good rest. We still haven't found out what happened to everybody else that lived in Durther City, but... Hmm. 
What do I want to do about 112, though? 112, I'm not sure if it's a good idea to leave him behind his corpse like that. Um, I'm going to risk it. Yeah, we'll just leave him there. Does everybody else agree with that? I mean, should we maybe, like, try to take apart the body as much as possible? Yeah, well, we haven't had a break in several days, so... Um... Yeah, I need to get a new weapon because, uh, yeah, oh! i got to ditch this pistol. Wait. Hold on, do I have to... Oh, shoot, no, it's my Wand of Wonder. Okay, that doesn't do me any good. I was going to say, I, I forgot. I have reduced and large, but it's part of the Wand of Wonder, so there's no guaranteeing that I'm going to get that because the Wand of Wonder is a complete crapshoot. Yeah. Oh. Um, which would have been helpful for us to have, so that way we could just make him small and bring him with us. So when you make something smaller with the Wand... Technically, it would also make it lighter enough to just pick it up. Yes, but the problem is, is that the Wand of Wonder, I don't have complete control over. So gotcha. I don't know. Is everybody going to go back to the headquarters and call it an adventure for today? or? Okay, you know what? I'm at least going to chop... What I'm going to do with 112 is I'm at least going to chop off his head and we're taking his head with us. We'll do it <laughs> okay. that way. <laughs> okay. Wow. Well, I mean, he is a person of concern, and if we leave his whole body there, he gets very easy for anyone to just reanimate him. I just hope nobody's going to charge us with desecrating a corpse That's in the next session. Like, uh, we can worry about it when we get there. We made it yeah. out last time. <laughs> yep. That's right. True. I think it might do more harm if uh, 112 is, uh, you know. Just wrap it in but something. How about we just... How about we just you take guys the whole were more charged with with killing uh, killing <laughs> people who had surrendered last time. It wasn't about desecrating a body. That was just like <laughs> oh, they they said it. it in court how I was rooting and high fiving after mm. killing everybody and just yeah. So it showed that it showed that you may had no remorse about killing innocent creatures. Okay. Um, anyway, I'm gonna go. We're taking the head. His head off. I put his head. I... Yep. And when they do that, I go up there and I make I like a sign a of beneficence. I'll just stick it just in. Just in case someone's watching. <laughs> Are there any cameras around here? I don't think so. All right. So we're going back to the headquarters. I'm not taking anything because swords are not my thing and I don't want the vampire armor. Well, so, what were the okay. two swords? The flame sword and. The, the flame tongue long sword and the short, or short sword and the short sword of life stealing. Then I want to grab that uh, flame sword, the short sword, uh, the flame, flame tongue, tongue short, short sword. sword. Okay. And when I do, I just kind of like cut the back of my hand with it real slowly, enough to Why? draw blood. Oh, okay. Why are you doing that? He doesn't even know. He just kind of like stops, wipes okay. his hand, puts it away. Three points of s slashing damage. All right, so are you guys going through the portal now? Yeah. Yep. I'll grab the sword for Bentley. Okay. Uh, so so Drovo says, Churduvir, do you know the pattern to get back to your place? What sort of saving throw should I do? You, you would just, you'd not a saving throw. You'd make an intel, intelligence check. Minus two. Yes, let's do that. Let's do an intelligence check. That gives me a nine minus two. That's a seven. You can't. You, you're you're trying, but you're having a hard time remembering it. Oh boy. Um, can I contact Bentley through my mind phone thing? Uh, yeah. All right. Hey, Bentley, are you there? It's it's me. Uh. It's me, Chur. Uh, I'm trying to remember what's the pattern to go back to our circle. Can you help me with that? He says, yeah, just a second. And he, he, he gets out the, there's a notebook of the patterns and he flips to the right one. Oh, thank God. And uh, he says, mm, how do I get this to you? Um, can you describe what rocks go where? Okay. Can he describe to me the pattern so I can do that? Yeah. How complicated yeah, he's, is he's, it? He's, he's, he's going to do that. Okay. It'll take a few minutes, but he'll, he'll sure. describe it while you do it. 
Okay. I'm putting the rocks. I've got got some pretty groovy rocks. Got some little crystals, little seashells. We're putting that stuff in the thing. They're tiles with pictures on them. Right. Uh, yeah, so you get them in the right order, and and you guys can uh, transport through the Innovo to back to um, back to the shop. Uh, so whoever wants to make a, a charisma saving throw with advantage for everybody. Uh, Ralph, can you do a charisma saving throw? I'm on it. Charisma saving throw. Plus seven. Yeah, Plus you're good. Seven. Okay. And you said do it twice with advantage. He said do it with advantage. It's nine. It's four. So the highest one was sixteen total. Sixteen. Yeah, you may you managed to get through, no problem. Cool. Okay, yeah, you're back at uh, you're back at the base. Okay, is Bentley there? He is. Yeah, he. he Yay! Is there Here, Bentley, after. and I'm gonna immediately give him that sword. So now I don't have to hold it. Anymore. And I'm going to give Bentley all the money that I found. Okay. And all uh, the other things that I collected. And I'd be like, so this is all yours. I need a long rest. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to, I want to go and hide in my room and nobody bother me. <laughs> I've been near you people too close. I've been around you people too long. Can we click long rest? Smell. Mm -hmm. I mean, Drovo is staying oh. in Arthur City. Okay, gotcha. Why is Drogobo staying? Because uh, he wants to get the consulate set back up again. And he's looking oh, after the okay. truck. Oh, maybe we cool. should have left him the truck battery then. Yeah. We you did? Guys, you guys sabotaged the truck? We didn't sabotage the truck. I think Richard just disconnected the battery. Yeah. No, because they want to make sure that we wouldn't get stolen so we can actually return it to Bentley. We can bring uh, him a new vehicle. But if Drogobo needs sabotage. it, then... That's Drovo's problem now. He can do a mechanics check uh, and see if he can. <laughs> well, did you did, did you take the battery out? I thought somebody said they were taking it with them. I thought we were taking it with us. It was pretty heavy, but we had a lot of stuff. I mean, I wouldn't doubt that it got left behind. Oh, uh, so we pulled it out and then just lost it. We're the best. I don't, so can you guys just tell me what happened? I just disconnected the negative battery cable so that anybody who tried to start it would just think it didn't start. Right. Okay. That's what I remember. Okay, well, All right. So I'm going into my room, taking a long rest, and uh, somebody put that hat at somewhere where it's not going to stink up the place. And uh, put it we'll, in the fridge. Yeah. Leave it with no, me. don't put it in the fridge. We'll put our food in the fridge. Uh, put it somewhere. Sure, just put it on my shelves in my room. Just Ooh. don't, don't let him eat it. I won't eat it. Okay. But I, I gotta comb my antenna. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you've taken right. a long rest. Um, yes. The, the next day, everybody's got their hit points and spells back and everything. Um, and uh, and Bentley comes back to you guys and says. Hey, uh, we got a call from uh, Jericho headquarters. What I want now. Hmm. Uh, okay. He says, believe it or not, Jericho wants us to run in a race, like a foot race. Uh, they said it's a contest with the Gulfs to see who can take over Jericho and take charge of this whole thing with Apex Amendios. Oh. I guess but, these do, hell guys don't think they don't trust us. Anyway, it's in two days, and it's at the foot of Mount Jokalelau at my old home of Beatrix. Uh, if this is the race, I want to go. He says, I bet I'm faster than all of you. How old are you, Bentley? I'm 30. Bentley, <laughs> I, I have some critical information I think you should know, though. That's uh, okay, are we just, like, all at the breakfast table again? Yeah. Yeah. Copy that. First of all, you might have been eating too many waffles to do this race. But the second thing is, I've heard, I was told by Gaustus. I'll race you. Know, you. I, I, yeah, I, I'm sure you can. I mean, I, I do have, I do have a question. Do you like, do you like shave your hair when you're going to go in a race, or doesn't that cause a lot of drag when you're running? Like you're pretty hairy. Do you want to race me right now? 
no, no, I'll pass. But anyway, there's a really important thing I got to tell you, which is I was told even more was, important than asking me if I'm shaved or telling me I ate too many waffles. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Look, it's up to you to establish boundaries. I, I don't have boundaries. I've got a plus two charisma. Um, so anyway, <laughs> I just want to say I was told by Gaustus that it's this race will be see. full of Butterfield agents. And that... Uh, What's is, a Butterfield is... agent? Okay, so, so how are we going to find out what gonna... the Butterfield agents are? Right. Um, so the message agent. was... That there's going to be a Butterfield faction, so there's going to be someone who's going to be working for Butterfield. Gauss has told us to watch out for those guys. He said that there's one guy that belongs to Gaustus, I think, and uh, and then he disappeared. So that's that's all I got. But he did mention the race, so this looks like it might be a, a kind of a setup. And he said, "Don't interfere with the one that's Gaustus's racer." Yeah, okay, so since Gaustus has one guy in the race, he told us not to interfere with him. Yeah. And so I guess we'll be there more as observers um, to this thing and to protect whoever uh, is going to be Gaustus. No, you're agent. not a. You're, no, they want you to race in the race. They want you oh, all want to us run to race. in it. Yeah. Not all, all of them. us? Or can we just have like maybe two or three of us go? Or maybe one person go and represent the whole team. Hmm. Yeah, if that sounds like a good way for that one person to get killed. Hmm. I said two or three. Is this like just a running race in a circle, right? Yeah, like they said death it was race three thousand. Oh, okay. It's from the foot of the mount of Mount Jakalelau, uh down to Beatrix. Okay. Okay. Do we start uh, at the top of the mountain and climb down? So, okay, so you're pretty fast. So, Bentley, I think you should be one of the people uh, to run in the race. Sorry, um, Bentley, did they say that it required all of us, or can we have a smaller team? Why? Well, the, what would everyone else be doing when when the smaller team is running the race? I think well, the that thing they is, would be following through with what Chodavir is worried about, which is Gaustus's guy. Or trying yeah. to find Gauss's guy, and also trying to figure out the Butterfield situation. Yeah, I the think they're Butterfield all Butterfield faction. I, it's they're all probably running in the race. Mm. Okay, so I guess we'll all be in the race too then. So that's what we have to do, and we'll 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 see how it plays out. We're gonna beat these Butterfield boys. All right. Yeah, I'm, I'm in. I'm, I just I hope we can figure out who is the Butterfield faction. Maybe it will become apparent as soon as we see the other uh, racers. Maybe they'll be covered in butter. <laughs> Maybe they'll be Nullianax, for all I know. What do you guys think? Uh, I think okay. a dead racer can't finish a race. Yeah. Okay, so what if I, we go to the race early and do, uh, invest in kind of like do an investigation and ask around at the uh, local haunts? Okay. Is this like a fall festival, or is the only race? Is the race is the only thing going on, right? Is this like at at the foot of Mount Jokalila? Is there any like village there? Or is it just set up for the race there? What 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 do we have to expect when we get there? It, it's running. You're well. I know the area. You'll be. This is where I grew up. You, you there's mm. a road up into the mountains. So you'll run down the road from up high in the mountains. Not high, but up in the mountain, mountain foothills. You'll run mm. down. Uh, it's about five kilometers. You'll run down to the town of Beatrix, where I grew up. Okay. Uh, how far is a kilometer? Uh, one thousand. A five k is three point one one miles. <laughs> what? I said a five k is three point one one miles. Three point one one divided by one thousand meters. You're from Midian, right? Me? I yeah. Mean, doesn't mean anything. I mean, I was born there while it was falling apart. Yeah. So well, you never you, heard it, of it, meters it, he, or he miles? He lived, lived there long enough to learn the language. Yeah. So when is this race? 
in two days. He said days. in two days. It's in two days. In two I think we should go days. early. Is there lots of lodging in Beatrix? Uh... I or haven't been there in a while. Maybe you for us. Hey, 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 hey. Let, let me see what I can find out. Okay. So he uh, he'll um, he he calls uh, the the head of the the uh, fourth dominion, which is uh, coaxial Tasco, mm -hmm. who's still alive, and the he uh, yeah he says hey. Uh, so for this race, we got we've got racers here um, that want that need to participate in the race. Um, <laughs> yeah, they want to get there early. I know it's tight, but can you get them in? No, it's important. Yeah, you know, Jericho business. You 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 remember them, <coughs> right? From the circus. Doesn't sound good, guys. I knew it'd be my fault. <laughs> no, I don't. Th no, I mean, yeah, I know that people get got killed, but I don't think that's gonna happen this time. <clears throat> They're there to to protect everybody. He says, "All right, you guys can get a a, a room at the Beatrix okay. Inn." Cool. We'll set uh, we'll set camp there and do a little preliminary investigation, I guess. Right, Mizet? Yep. That's okay. what we should do. Well, yeah. Ralph is going to give everybody little tooth necklaces with leather. Oh, beholder teeth. Beholder teeth. Nice. Necklaces with little uh, leather necklace straps from his own flesh. He cool. was able to carry the leather that fast. Ralph can do many things. Hey, Richard's got an Olympic shooting oh, medal right there. Yeah. So, like, there you go, the everybody. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. If you don't All wear right. them, rip off your face skin. I appreciate uh, that. I thought it was a good All game. Right. Thank you. All right. It was fun. Sorry, Ralph was, a... was hyper. What did Ralph do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So on the podcast, uh, we are going to have, uh, we'll be talking about the Raw Head Rex in 4K coming up soon. Oh, yeah. We're going to have more discussion of the Boom Hellraiser comics and Quartet of Torment coverage. Sounds good. I heard Looking they were remaking Raw Head Rex. Really? Where did you hear uh, that? I thought I was reading huh. through something, maybe like Remord or something. I don't know. Just what happened? Like Sorry. Thought I... Could be mistaken, but I thought they were remaking Raw Head Rex. Ah, huh. I didn't hear that. Well, uh, yeah, I, I, I did look it up now, and it says as of March 2019, the original director, jo uh, George Pavlou, has expressed interest in rebooting the movie. He said that there was increased fan interest after the 2017 Blu ray release. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. Yeah, the point, is, yeah, the point of remaking a movie is to, to make it better. Oh. Yeah. No, I think I, think, I really liked Underworld when I could you. actually watch it, and I legitimately thought the music was good. Like I think I the music, music is good. Yeah, I, but yeah, uh, he, he that George Pavlov hit us up and watched on Instagram, on Instagram and was yeah. asking us to review it and everything on Amazon. Oh yeah, oh. so if you have any, if you've bought any of his movies, yeah, put a review on Amazon because it helps him out. Yeah, the guy's oh. just hustling. Yeah, he was really sweet. He needs, really sweet. He needs work. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, I got Underworld. Yeah. I guess I'll do that for him. Yep. Yep. I'll do that. I'd be down Sounds good. That yeah, that's, that's a, that was, I ended up loving it. <laughs> I just feel like if if, yeah. uh, if Rawhead Rex got remade, it would make more sense to be remade by a different director than the original re director, but that's just my it's idea. It's not unheard of. Like a Fede yeah. Alvarez. We'll I mean, that's true. It. It, yeah. it needs to be remade so it's more faithful to this st short story. Should be sure. remade by Clive. That would be really cool if it was more yeah. faithful to the short story, but people can't yeah. handle like any sex at all about anything. So I don't think that they're gonna handle, you know, giant mm. demon pee stuff. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Is it sperm? Giant demon sperm things. I don't Is think it they can. Big old it. giant demon penis, yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. It's Raw actually- head. <laughs> Sounds like a trauma film. Yeah, do it. Sounds like an LSF film. <laughs> and with that, I say goodbye for the well and adieu. All right. We'll see you next time. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye, guys. Peace. Thank you for joining us, and we hope you have subscribed. You can find the Clive Barker podcast wherever you find audio. Show notes for this episode, as well as news and reviews, can be found at our website at www.clivebarkercast.com. The Clive Barker Podcast, or BarkerCast, is an independent editorial podcast and blog that is not affiliated with or under contract by Clive Barker or Seraphim Inc. This is a labor of love by the fans for the fans. You can chat with us on our Facebook BarkerCast listeners group, our Facebook page, Twitter, or our Discord server. The best way to support us is to buy our book, The BarkerCast Interviews, Occupy Midian, available in hardcover on Amazon and ebook on Amazon and Apple Books. Fundraiser 10 is all about Patreon this year. Become a patron to get access to exclusive stuff. Pick an episode topic and maybe even get cool stuff in the mail. You can also buy a t-shirt on our TeePublic store. Go to TeePublic.com and search for BarkerCast. Leave a message for us using the SpeakPipe link on our blog. Opening and ending music generously provided by Ray Norrish. Thanks for listening.